Yesterday there were some people here, mostly people who are from Windsor itself, and of course people here in Windsor very much saw the royal family as, as part of the community here. We'll have a unique position in today's events. And a very good morning to you. You're outside the gate just uh, down from me here, but a little later on, you will, and you'll tell me exactly if this is the case, you'll be the only reporter inside the chapel as the funeral takes place. Yes, good morning, Charlie. We have the most extraordinary commentary position for BBC Radio. We have a number of commentators inside the walls of the castle today, including Claire Balding and Alan Little, but, but I'll be positioned actually inside the chapel itself and directly over the high altar in the Catherine of Aragon wooden balcony. People who visited at St George's Chapel may well know it. It's high above the choir. It will be lowered very, very slowly down into the royal vault where kings and queens and princes and princesses have lain for many hundreds of years. It will be quite a spine-tingling moment of theatre, I think, in, in the service itself. Eleanor, we've been speaking to members of the military and the uh, royal household who've been explaining, in a way, the change in tone of the event today. Inside the walls, there will be the procession. Yes, this contrast struck me the other day, actually. I watched the military procession as it came down the hill, led by the band of the Grenadier Guards, and just the magnificence of the 700-plus service personnel who will be lining the route from, uh, from the State Departments down to the chapel itself. Adapted for the service as well. You heard uh, that uh, there will be Eternal Father Strong to save the Navy hymn and other music and readings as well, which reflect the Duke's great interest in the natural world, in the environment and in, in his naval um, fascination, his, his, his profession as a sailor as well. Of course, he was a, an admiral in, in the Royal Navy. You heard uh, that uh, there will be Eternal Father Strong to save the Navy hymn and other music and readings as well, which reflect the Duke's great interest in the natural world, in the environment, and in, in his naval um, fascination, his, his, his profession as well, which reflect the Duke's great interest in the natural world, in the environment, and in, in his naval um, fascination, his, his, his profession as a sailor as well. Of course, he was a, an admiral in, in the Royal Navy, but there, there are so many mentions of the music and readings as well, which reflect the Duke's great interest in the natural world, in the environment, and in, in his naval um, fascination, his, his, his profession as a... The Duke's great interest in the natural world, in the environment, and in, in his naval um, fascination, his... his well, you heard uh, that uh, there will be Eternal Father Strong to save the Navy hymn, and other music and readings as well, which reflect the Duke's great interest in the natural world, in the environment, and in, in his naval um, fascination, his... See, people who watch and listen to the service will, will notice that it features in, in the hymns, in, in the hymn, in the music, uh, in the readings. But of course, hymns, something that is often a very great outlet for people at funerals, the chance to sing the hymns, that won't be allowed to happen either because these are the COVID restrictions that, that people who've had church funerals this year have had to deal with. Eleanor, thank you very much. So a reminder for you this morning, you can follow live coverage of the funeral at a special program, 2 p.m. Well, you'll have seen by now, uh, we are blessed this morning with very, very beautiful weather. We have bright blue skies and warm sunshine this morning. The image you can see there is inside the castle walls. As Eleanor was describing just a moment ago, that is where you will see the procession. Royal standard, not a breath of wind uh, here. And uh, you can see it is a magnificent setting, the castle. Very few people here at the moment. Uh, in other circumstances, there may well have been a very different atmosphere. It is a beautiful day. Uh, the funeral itself at 3 p.m. this afternoon. I'll hand you back to the studio now and to Naga. Here at Windsor Castle, you'll see from the image behind me, we have bright, bright sunshine this morning. It's really changed the temperatures, uh, warming up. It is going to be a stunning day in this magnificent setting. Naga, I hand back to you in the studio. Thanks very much, Charlie. Um, beautiful scenes there at Windsor, of course, but no crowds. Um, people being urged to stay away 
from the event this afternoon, of course, the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, the tranquil scenes ahead of the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh this afternoon from six o'clock. Now, here on BBC One, you can follow live coverage to leave you with a look at the remarkable life of His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, and just some of the reaction to his death over the past week at the age of 99. From all of us on The Breakfast Team, goodbye. against those blue skies. What we know, of course, is that just 30 guests will attend in line with COVID restrictions. And the public has been asked to stay away. I can tell you that here in Windsor, I was here a little bit yesterday afternoon into the evening, and the only people really you saw are local people. Many people here very much feel like the royal family are part of the community here. So Graham Satchel has been talking to some of those locally to see how they're feeling. TV him and other music and readings as well, which reflect the Duke's great interest in the natural world, in the environment, and in, in his naval um, fascination. His this afternoon. I can tell you in bright sunshine here at Windsor Castle, uh, you can see the Royal Standard flying there, not a breath of wind against those blue skies.